So what are the two things that uh, emerge about this uh, process that have to concern us in any uh, uh, course or process where you're looking at uh, diplomacy as a vehicle for solving some major uh, international threat? And I'm going to use the president's words in his, uh, in a world of complex, in his uh, speech last, uh, two nights ago, in a world of complex threats, our security and leadership depends on all elements of our power, including strong and principled diplomacy. American diplomacy, backed by the threat of force, is why Syria's chemical weapons are being eliminated. And it is American diplomacy, backed by pressure, that has halted the progress of Iran's nuclear program and, he said, rolled, back, rolled parts of that program back for the very first time in a decade. So um, he, he added, um, if uh, John Kennedy and Ronald Reagan uh, could negotiate with the Soviet Union, um, surely the United States is strong enough and confident enough to negotiate with uh, uh, far less powerful states. <laughs> of course, we know he didn't want to insult Iran by, <laughs> by saying uh, that Iran was a, a jokester compared to the threat we faced from uh, the Soviet Union. Uh, but he put it right. I mean, uh, and, and certainly he's right. Um, diplomacy is uh, uh, critical. Um, after 1979, very little real negotiation occurred with Iran. Uh, generally, we either did not talk at all, or we made very foolish and fruitless appeals. The Iran-Contra affair was Ronald Reagan's contribution to Iranian diplomacy. I mean, you know, here is the man, uh, I was serving in the administration um, uh, during that time when we were negotiating with the Soviet Union with a lot of strength behind our, our talk, and a very systematic negotiating process that I'm going to describe in a little bit of detail. And um, at the same time, uh, I'm negotiating with the Iranians in The Hague, but I'm being held back. You're not allowed to talk about this. You're not allowed to talk about that. Settling cases, having a very good relationship with a member of the Council of Guardians, who I talked to for five years and, and had excellent dealings with, and rarely was I permitted to go beyond uh, anything uh, that, uh, that lawyers would, would not uh, feel comfortable talking about. Every now and then I was, and with very fruitful results. Um, and I've never forgotten the day when uh, I was sitting across from him uh, telling him why we would not sell them arms under any circumstances. And uh, we had this case with him, uh, and um, uh, we, had, we had just been ordered to either uh, give them back their weapons. We had a whole bunch of their weapons um, that we were re re restoring. Or we, so we, we said, we're not going to give them back their weapons, and we're not going to give them the money either, because they violated the contracts that, are, that we write for FMS deals that we make with uh, friendly countries. Well, uh, the court was clearly ordered, clearly going to order us to give back the weapons or pay them. And so we started negotiating to pay them. And my counterpart, who was a, who's a, very, uh, a very erudite, genteel uh, uh, man who uh, went to the University of Sorbonne uh, for his law degree, perfectly cultured gentleman, and he says to me, are you sure? Are you sure you can't give us the weapons? I said, yes, of course I'm sure we can't give you the weapons. Are you really sure that you can't give us weapons? And of course, I'm sitting there not knowing anything about Iran-Contra, and the weapons are, we're selling them weapons uh, secretly at three times the retail price. Uh, not, not very pleasing to discover you've not only paid retail, but you've paid three times retail. Um, so they were 
Uh, he was shocked. I mean, what, really? And I, you know, one day, soon thereafter, I discovered, of course, why he was surprised, because uh, he knew more than I did about what was going on between our countries. 